Greetings, I'm Deke, and this is the show where I go over things that were of interest to me in the last week. Fortunately, I have a great many interests, so there's probably something for you here too. It's another week and another series of coronavirus delays. Disney updated their release schedule for the next few years, and it came with some not unexpected adjustments. Most notably, the upcoming live adaptation of Artemis Fowl will be skipping theaters altogether. Instead of a theatrical release or even a digital rental release, the movie is going straight to Disney Plus sometime in the near future. Meanwhile, Disney seems optimistic that theaters will be back open by June, with Disney and Pixar's Soul slated for a June 19th release, with Mulan coming in next on July 24th. On the Marvel side of things, Black Widow has been rescheduled to November 6th, making it the only Marvel Studios release of the year. The delay will push back the Phase 4 schedule, with The Eternals moving to February 12th, Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings premiering on May 7th, and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness coming out on November 5th of 2021. Presuming nothing else goes wrong, 2022 is going to be even more packed. Thor Love and Thunder will release on February 18th, followed by Black Panther 2 on May 6th, Captain Marvel 2 on July 8th, and a yet-to-be-revealed Marvel Studios movie on October 7th. 2022 also lists an untitled Indiana Jones movie and an untitled Star Wars movie, scheduled for July 29th and December 16th, respectively. In the meantime, if you're looking for something to watch, there's a new source of classic anime available. Retro Crush launched this week, offering a modest selection of old-school movies and series. The streaming service is not subscription-based, so you can just dive right in. Oddly enough, it's only available through apps like Google Play or Roku, though a browser player is apparently in development. And while nobody really seems to be into April Fools this year, there were some notable attempts. FDG Entertainment had a bittersweet prank this week announcing a remake of DuckTales Quack Shot and providing the concept art to go with it. Interestingly, while the game was never really in development, the concept art was real. It turns out the developers actually did pitch the game to Disney, but were rejected, so instead they used the art for their prank. Presuming it actually was a prank and not just another low-key pitch to generate buzz. Heading into upcoming releases, it's actually pretty dire this week. Not even coming to television, we have 50 States of Fright premiering on Quibi this week, so a 10-minute horror anthology from Sam Raimi. Also on Quibi, there's The Fugitive, where Keith Sutherland hunts an innocent man for 10 minutes at a time. Fortunately, there's more anime. Over on Crunchyroll, Tower of God is simulcasting this week. It sure looks trippy, but also pretty cool. Then there's My Next Life as a Villainess, All Routes Lead to Doom, a show about a girl who realizes that she's the antagonist in a dating sim story and has to figure out how to avoid the good ending, or in her case, the bad ending. That's a heck of a concept. Moving on to video games, Disaster Report 4 Summer Memories is the feel-good title about getting outside and interacting with people that I think we all need right now. But for something a little more realistic, M.A. Survival is a retro horror game about a guy trapped in an apartment. Gato Fight is, according to the description, a pure fighting game. It appears to have been made for mobile, but without holding that against it, it just looks spectacular. Alder's Blood is a gothic horror-based tactics RPG, and wasn't this supposed to come out a few weeks ago? Oh well, it still looks good. And finally on Steam, Shadow Gangs is the side-scrolling action game that looks like how we remember Sega Genesis games looked like. Over on the Epic Games Store, free this week is Totally Reliable Delivery Service, which looks mostly like a game about trying to manage bad controls. Gone Home is the non-game that generated critical acclaim for not being a game. And Hob is a charming-looking action-adventure title about a kid with a robot arm and a robot friend. Maybe they're both robots, it's kind of hard to tell. Moving to consoles on the Switch and other consoles this week is Convoy, a tactical roguelike, which is a tactical roguelike. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Fight Animals isn't exactly the most typical fighting game, but it's just kind of hard to look away from it. Monster Viator is making its way to the Switch. It's a cool looking RPG that I swear I just covered on Steam a few weeks ago. And finally, over on the PS4, it is here at last. Years and years, and even more years in the making, the first installment of the Final Fantasy VII Remake will soon be a reality. You know, for those that haven't already gotten it early. Will this game live up to the hype? Is such a thing even possible? We'll find out in just a few more days. And that leaves us with this week's awesome video. It's a little older, but let's boost the hype a bit with the behind-the-scenes look at what went into redefining our favorite members of Avalanche. 
そこはちょっと自分でもチャレンジしてるんですけど同時に皆さんは受け入れてくれてるのかなって<笑>くれるのかなっていうのは。That's it for this week. So what was your favorite April Fool's prank this year? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos and maybe give me a like if you think I deserved it. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great week.